Armin and Levac, 104.5, the team, and it is hockey season, baby! Woo-hoo. Starting tonight, the New York Rangers take on the St. Louis Blues in St. Louis, and that is where Dave Maloney of the MSG Networks is standing by right now. Dave, it's a beautiful day having you back on the station, man. We missed you, Dave. Well, I'm telling you, as I said uh, from the moment before, you guys got to get out a little bit. If this is the highlight, wow. Hey, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> Don't sell yourself short, man. Your greatness, Dave. Your greatness. <laughs> no, so, it's great. Actually, it's great to be back. And, of course, uh, we would be remiss not to think about that, that run uh, last spring that was fun on a lot of fronts. But uh, I guess it's the way it goes. You just got to get back on the horse and... Uh, and like everybody else, I'm just, I hope I'm speaking for you guys. It's very excited to get the season back on the rails here and um, see what it brings. Okay, season starts tonight. Puck drops. And Dave, I'm going to start with a softball slash not really a softball question for you. Is this team, this Rangers team on paper, better than last year's team that went to the Stanley Cup Finals? Oh, boy. Uh, well, it, it's pretty hard to think. Anything could be better. Uh, I, I mean, I think let, let me you know fudge my way through this by saying uh, the core of this team is still the core of the team. That's Lundqvist, the blue line, uh, certainly step on uh, when he's healthy. Nash, Taylor will take a bigger role. I, I think when you look at any run, you know so many things had to fall into place. Uh, you can go to the price getting knocked out in the Montreal series, the team coming from oblivion down 3-1 against Pittsburgh and the whole St. Louis thing. So, um, it, it, and, and then it's hard to compare a team that got that far um, with the personnel they had, and the personnel is different. It's a different personnel of this hockey club. So uh, the long and short of it, I would say, as I thought they were last year going into the season, uh, there's a lot of uh, variables to their story that make them a playoff team. And as we saw last year, once you get in it, anything can happen. Dave, we uh, we now know that the captain is, in fact, def- uh, defenseman Ryan McDonough. Right choice? Yeah, I think it'd be pretty. I, I think most people uh, thought um, that if he wasn't the next one, that would have been surprising. So I can't, I can't help but think what conversation I had with Todd Richards, who was the head coach of the Columbus Blue Jackets, who was one of the Olympic uh, coaches last year in Sochi for America. And I asked him, in just in conversation, who of all those great players were there? Who surprised you the most? And he said, without a, a moment's hesitation, Ryan McDonough. And, uh, and the thing and his, the observation was certainly his hockey, uh, but just how well he, he handled situations and and the kind of the aura that he had about him. Uh, you know, he wasn't an overly loud guy, but he commanded uh, all kinds of respect and on and off. So I think uh, that probably is about as telling observation as one can make about McDonough. And and uh, so I think most people think uh, they got it right, and it really wasn't a very hard choice. Dave Maloney of the MSG Networks with Armin in the back on 104.5, the team. You're home for New York sports. Dave is in St. Louis where the Rangers drop the puck with the Blues tonight for their first game of the season. Dave, there's four assistant captains on this team. Girardi, uh-huh. Stahl, Stepan, Martin, St. Louis. Why is that significant, these four guys? Well, you know, I, I, I wish I had a, a million-dollar answer for that one. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why it was four. I think the other question from the kind of dynamics of the club is is that Rick Nash was left off the list. You know, how does that play out? I think, you know, you'd be pretty hard-pressed to argue with the guys that are involved. Um, but it is a trend now to kind of include more than, than less. And uh, I'm just not sure. I think it is a, collectively they're a pretty tight group. They really are. There's very few, you know, when... Dubinsky was around. He was a bit of a character, a bit of an outlier. You know, you don't, there are not many of that on this group. They're all pretty, and I think they all also, you know, have had enough experience now to believe that they can be pretty good and are kind of confident moving forward. So, you know what, why there are four assistants, <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I love your honesty. That's one of the things I've always loved about you, Dave. <laughs> Um, we, we mentioned uh, Stepan. He he's on the long term IR. How does the team get by without him through November third? Well, that's that's you know that is the issue, and, and uh, the good news is it's early. Um, and I think uh, Elaine Vigneault 
um, even with step lines in the lineup, was willing to admit that sometimes it takes a while for a group to kind of find out who they are. Now, in talking with him, he has intimated that he hopes it doesn't take till uh, December, which he felt it took last year. Um, but I think there's every expectation that you can't. I remember going back to the start of the season after the the run uh, a couple of years ago to the conference finals, where they lost to the Devils, and of course made the trade for Nash in the off season. There was a big makeover in the team, and how difficult it was just to kind of get everybody on the same page. And I I don't think that's any different here. So then you throw in the injury to step on, um, and that just kind of. Hey, I think what it tells is you, you may have to be a little bit patient with a story that built itself uh, over the course of last season and a story that had a lot of things fall into place, self-inflicted and, and what happened around the league, to get to the finals. And here we are, you know, early of an 82-game season before it even counts. So, uh, But there's no question the step-on situation now. It, it's put St. Louis in the middle. Uh, it's kept Kevin Hayes around a little bit longer. It's forced them to maybe look at personnel, which uh, they wouldn't have been with Stepan in the lineup. So, uh, but it is early, and um, hopefully Stepan will get back. You know, probably ten games into the season, they can uh, go with their top center ice from then. Armin in the back, 104.5 The Team, 104.5 The Team.com. Dave Maloney of the MSG Networks joining us. He is in St. Louis Rangers. Blues tonight. The puck drops. First regular season game of the year. We're excited about it. And Dave, want to ask you first about a guy on the ice that we might not be familiar with. 19-year-old Anthony Duclair. He wowed in camp. He made the team. How good is this kid and what are the expectations for him? Well, he's certainly been good enough to, to really muddle the picture. I, I don't think there was anybody in the Ranger manager or those of us who've kind of paid attention to this group thought that this the kid was going to be where he is on opening night. That being said, he certainly played well enough to warrant a shot in opening night. Although I would, uh, I would not kind of judge a career on opening night roster for a 19-year-old kid in the league. This, uh, you know, he was a third-round pick, one of three in 2012, scored 50 plus, 90 plus points last year in the Collect Major League, and has played well enough to warrant a look. But this is still a man's league. And they do have a 10-game window. Uh, coincidentally, that 10-game window will be just about the time that step on is probably back ready to play. Uh, so while it's a good story and a legitimate story where he warrants a look, um, you know, the roster could change dramatically on a number of fronts uh, with Anthony Duclair. So we'll see. I think now you get in. Uh, it's interesting. I thought uh, he, he, he really shone early in the exhibition season was still a factor uh, moving forward when the rosters got kind of more veteran in the exhibition series. Now you're getting to play the big boys. You're playing a big boy team tonight in St. Louis. You've got a big boy game against San Jose coming up. So we'll see. We'll see if he's ready. Uh, but it is a good story. and It's a good story to pay attention to. All right, Dave. So it, it took a little time for Lane you know, uh fast-paced, offense, heavy style to click. You know, we've got an off season and a season under our belt. New faces. How uh, how should we expect the Rangers to play this year? Well, I think you, it's interesting. I think Vino's stamp on the franchise was clearly evident by the by and large the guys they went out and signed, and those are all guys by and large outside of Ryan Malone to get around. Guys in their own end that could make a quick pass and get out of your own end. This is going to be a, a, a franchise under Vino uh, that has the same kind of genre as Chicago, Detroit, Pittsburgh, Tampa to a large degree. Those those teams that are going to play with pace and play with skill. Now it's not going to be Anaheim. It's probably not going to be LA where there's a little more brawn to their depth, a little more size. Uh, size to their roster. So I, I think that's what you're going to see. I, I, I think you're going to continue to see that evolution of they're going to defend by uh, with the puck in their own end to, to, to make a play to come up ice with speed and skill. Now, whether that gets it done, well, that's why you play. You go out and play and see what happens. It makes for, I think, an entertaining brand of hockey. The camp has been entertaining. The scrimmages have been entertaining. Uh, so it's just that next step in, in a Pino system that puts its premium on speed and skill. 
Dave Maloney in St. Louis. Dave, as always, thank you so much. And I have a feeling I'll be saying that a few more times this season. But have a great season. Uh, Safe travels to you. We'll talk soon. We'll be watching and listening tonight for you. Well, uh, unlike a a number of cowboys that get on with you two dudes, I look forward to it. (laughs) (laughs) That's probably a fair statement. That's fair. (laughs) Talk soon. See you, Dave. All right, bye.